not even in a million years would humanity have thought they would meet their dooms at the hands of hooves of pastile colored ponies. Well, the silly saying did happen, as hypothetical as it sound, at least in some places within vasts of the multiverse, Celestia's light shined through an open door leading into the throne room, where Celestia herself was sat upon her throne with her head looking down at the floor. She was deeply depressed despite her victory over the, the humans last week, with the barrier covering what was left of the former human Earth. She, for her own student, had betrayed her the moment she decided to save humanity from itself three years ago. A small smile made its way onto her face as she thought there might be some hope. Yet, in convincing Twilight, she was right about humanity. They needed to change. They needed to become ponies. They needed their dangerous human nature wiped away. She stood up, walked down the steps of her throne, and then made her way to the dark dungeon below her castle. The dripping of water and the squeaks of rats could be heard in the dungeon below. Canterlot, the alicorn twilight, lay, was laying on the floor in a dark, small, damp cell with, with no bars. However, she was trapped within a see-through light, blue spear of magical energy. The clips, clops, of hooves could be heard approaching. Twilight, said Celestia softly. Twilight opened her eyes to glare angrily at Celestia. Please don't look at me like that. Why? She stood up. Do you finally feel guilty for your crimes? Has your old self returned? I did what I had to do, and I'm still my old self. Then this conversation is pointless. Please just go away. Twilight, please. Shut up! Leave me alone! She shouted. I can't do that, Twilight. I must try to convince you I was right about humanity. Yet again, you come down here to try and make me see the light. Just how stupid are you? I'm not stupid. Why don't- why didn't you kill me like the others who dare stand against you? Because you are my student, and I hope you are sorry for betraying me. Twilight rolled her eyes in annoyance. Oh, I'm so sorry, Celestia, for betraying you. You were right all along about humanity. I wished I helped you grab crying children out of their screaming mothers and turning them into new fowls and enforcing human soldiers to kill their own children," she said sarcastically. Such things are necessary when in time of war, Twilight glared at Celestia with a pure hatred in her eyes. The memories of her confronting humans that had lost their entire families flooded her mind, memories of trying to stop many hu a human from committing suicide just before they blew their brains out with a gun. Memories upon memories of suffering Celestia had caused to the human race. Twilight glared at Celestia with pure hatred in her eyes. The memories of her confronting humans that had lost their entire family. When I get out of here, Celestia, I will kill you, and once you are dead, I will find a way to bring humanity back from the dead. If I don't get out of here, I hope... I only hope our race would meet another race more f powerful than us, and we suffer the same fate as humans. Maybe then she'll realize the irony. She fought. Twilight continued to glare at Celestia, causing some tears to begin to 
the form in Celestia's eyes. Please, Twilight, I need a friend. You are not Celestia. You are some sort of twisted doppelganger doing a horrible impersonation of her. The Celestia I know is long gone and dead, but our conversation is over. Twilight went down on the floor and closed her eyes. Please, Twilight, please, she said timidly. Please, she screamed in the royal counterlot voice. Celestia tried again and again to get an answer from Twilight, whom still had not responded to her. She merely just laid there, saying nothing. After several minutes, she had finally given up. Okay, Twilight. I'll... I'll be back tomorrow to try and convince you I was right. With that, she walked away in deep sadness. Yet again, she had failed to convince Cel Twilight she was right about humanity. No amount of chocolate cake could fix the heartache she felt. Elsewhere, far away, in the deepest, darkest depths of the space, there was a weeping Celestia trapped within a see-through blue, light blue spear of magical energy. Despite being so far away from Earth, she saw that what that doppelganger had done to her little ponies and hum the human races. But she could do nothing but watch in horror as an entire world died and see her subjects become brainwashed, murderous psychopaths. At least she wasn't alone. Her sister was there, next to her, in another spear of magical energy. One day, we shall re get out of here, sister. We shall bring back harmony and restore true harmony, said Luna. I hope so. A small smile made its way across Celestia's face, for she hoped that Twilight Sparkles and a few ponies not under the mind control would one day defeat the abomination of herself and bring her humanity back from the grave. Hope is all the truth Celestia and Luna has got now. Once again, the other false Celestia was sat down on her throne, looking down on the floor with tears streaming from her eyes. Across the Equestria and former Earth, the new fowls obeyed their new pony masters without questions, doing all the heavy labors in farming to feed the masses. The false Celestia got her dream, a boring world where nothing ever changes and every pony had forced happy smiles, but in the odd place, a place hidden from peeping eyes, some ponies act strange and whispering vengeance for humanity and lay plans for this Celestia's downfall. The End